What's up guys, it's Jacob Contrast Cards and we're back with another massive pickup video. These pickups are either shipped to me or I drove and met up with them. No shows. I took a week off of shows. Currently in my stage of life, I have another baby on the way, so I'm trying to ramp down shows a little bit and focus more on buying online, getting things shipped to me. So all of this that I picked up is on shows. I think it was just a hair over or under 100,000 spent this week. So super great week of buying, but Let's go ahead and get into it. I know that's what y'all are here to see. And shout out everybody on the last pickup video that counted how many cards. I think I'm gonna keep that a running theme going forward. So like last time, the first person to count how many cards that I show in this video and get it right, and the first person to comment on this YouTube video, don't message me on Instagram, don't message me anywhere else. First person to comment on this YouTube video to get it right how many cards I show to that camera because somebody made a comment about cards in the back will win 20 bucks we'll make it a running theme every single time 20 bucks to the first person to comment how many cards i show in these videos um with that being said i know you guys liked the format last time a little bit more of me talking over a few cards but also giving more advice going all the way through and that was the plan i just didn't know if people would want that so i did it like halfway through last time that was like a 50 50 minute video but a really good one from the nashville show but there's some really good pieces in this stuff that I picked up today. A lot of cards, so let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off, we have a CJ Stroud Kaboom. Shout out Scott from Smyrna Everything Collectibles, I believe is his exact store name. Um, I'll have Dustin put it up here. And super great guy. He was at the Nashville show and I didn't want to go over there and he brought it over to me. But that also reminds me the way I wanted to start this video out was with a card that I bought today and it will not be here in enough time but for this pickup video but i bought a fleer bgs8 was hoping it would make it here in enough time for this video but it's not but that was how i was hoping to start this video out and i remembered as i showed that stroud but stroud cool kaboom there to start it off and then we have going into the next deal this the rest of this on the table is all through one deal that i got shipped to me this was like 31,000. We have a Shohei Otani. What is this out of? Again, certified to 15. Mr. Uh, Calvin Ridley. Samuel Munoz, Prospects Red, PSA 10. I was kind of hesitant going in and buying a bunch of baseball with the MLB season starting up. I just don't keep up with it. So like, this will probably be the last big baseball lot you see me buy um i just don't keep up with the sport i just don't have enough time uh so if i do buy big baseball going forward it's definitely going to be um what's the best way to put this less risk it's the best way to put it less risk than the percentage i'm willing to pay on it just because man i don't know i i pay attention to football all the time and i bought a rashi rice in this lot and completely forgot about it and that man's down bad. And if you know, you know, I don't want to talk about it. And why is it always the NFL that has these players have the craziness happen to them? Um, 101 Lonzo. Justin Fields, just some nice, easy liquid stuff as always. Football and basketball is always still just so, so, so hot. Another 101 die cut black. Uh, I'm very interested. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think the Thunder are going to do in the playoffs because I've had some pretty cool Thunder cards recently and I've considered holding and there's one in here that I think I will. Uh, we got a Devin Vassal, True in T-Ski. True Ski to 99. Beautiful, beautiful card there. He is out the rest of the season, but whatever. Sabrina, True. Uh, at the time of this video, the draft will not come out. The, the draft will not have happened yet. And I think JJ McCarthy may go top 15. And I think people are sleeping on that as a possibility. That's just where my head's at. Javante Williams, 101, Tar Heels. Cool card there. Nothing crazy, but 101s. Three Neon Knights, I believe this is. Yeah, Neon Knights. Two, uh, one Brady, and then two Trevor Lawrences. One of those other random case hit things that there always are now. This guy just got Stefan Diggs. CJ Stroud at the National. Rest. That's all I can say. 
Brother, that guy, man. I'm gonna say my statement on CJ Stroud and then I'll pause when on a few cards as they come up. CJ Stroud is having the young quarterback effect right now where the team 100% is going all in right now on making sure that their rookie contract for the quarterback is able to get them the best team possible. The same thing happened with Joe Burrow. Same thing happened with Jared Goff. Um, but Joe Burrow is definitely the most recent. The rookie season, they come out and ball out. And because of that, clearly the team wants to go all in on them while their contract's still super cheap. Same thing's happening with the 49ers. I don't know how the 49ers haven't thrown more money out, in my opinion. Nasty one here to a white sparkle. But um, yeah, speaking of CJ Stroud, obviously amazing rookie season, and now they're throwing everything they can to try to build the best team around them to make a run, which for me as a Titans fan sucks because literally we <laughs> were so close for so long, and now we're in like easily one of the most competitive divisions, period. Probably one of the youngest quarterback divisions too. I'd be really interested to know that. I don't think there's a single quarterback in the division that has played more than three years. Because Trevor was 2021. 20, yeah, this will be three years. Yeah, no, oh, brother. This one's nasty too. I'll be real interested to see where he goes. Marvin Harrison, orange to 25, I believe. Yeah, it's a 10, a PSA 10. Speaking of what somebody's gonna do, Justin Fields, white sparkle PSA 10. This card at one point comp so freaking high. And if you go look this up, this card sold for 2,600 bucks. What is it worth now being that he is a backup on the Steelers? Or is he not a backup? My opinion, he's a backup because Russell Wilson was balling last year. Is he their future? Is he a trade piece for the draft? I don't know, but he's a backup right now. Keegan Murray, White Sparkle, PSA 10. Travis Kelsey, Auto, PSA 9. This is the card I was talking about for the Thunder that I might keep. Jalen Williams, White Spark, PSA 10. I believe this guy's name is pronounced Caminero. People always love to get on to me for mispronouncing these guys' last names, but Junior Caminero, PSA 10. Nasty, nasty patch. Trusky, Patrick Williams. Brooks Lee. Shaden Sharp. Speaking of what I was talking about earlier, even though I keep up with football all the time, sometimes I just don't even think about it on players doing things that are 100% gonna affect their prices. And if you haven't been paying attention, when I was referring to all that, Shohei Otani's prices have definitely changed. So, something to be aware of. All right, still more with this one deal. I just gotta keep this isolated for back-end purposes. I like to stay very, 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 very organized. It's the only way I'm able to keep up with this many cards is being very organized. And sometimes I'm showing things as they have already sold and I'm showing them before they go out or cards on eBay and it's sold and I'm showing it before it goes out. So I have to stay like super organized. It's very, very rare that I'm able to film these videos and not already be in the process of selling the cards. Just with that much inventory, it's, I gotta keep the ball rolling, so. Bronze, believe this is two Jaden Ivy autos, yep. But let me know if you guys have been liking this new format of pickup video. Feel like it's more sit down and hang, talk about sports cards, get to see. A lot of y'all have had good feedback for me, so I assume that that is the case. But just wanting to make sure. New Tennessee Titan, Tony Pollard. And of course too, if there's anything that you would like me to do more of in these pickup videos, because I know it's a long time commitment, but it's almost like a perfect time to do Q and A's or a live chat during this would be interesting because my channel is not big enough yet to justify something like that, but something to keep in mind in the future. This is so cheap, so cheap. Najee Harris True NT is like 80 or a hundred bucks or something like that. Like. Bruh, this guy's due for a season, a freaking season. And if Joe Burrow gets Justin Jefferson, if you want to talk about one of the craziest off seasons that would ever happen, speaking of, that would be nuts. 
Speaking of an off season that's crazy too, this guy went from like the most sought after to like, bro, his team, I swear to God, as I have for Justin Herbert back to back, XR season downtown. His team may be the worst team in the entire division. I'm not joking. I If you take Herbert off that team, they're the worst team, period. Like, it's so bad. They lost everybody. Mind you, this is pre-draft. This is April 4th, so a lot can change during now to the season. But very, very interesting. Nasty, nasty one here. Tyrese Halliburton, Noir, Auto. Basketball playoffs are, I think, next month. I don't remember. Disgusting NT, Giannis. But last year, my pick going into the playoffs was the Nuggets. And I will say that I was right. I was right pretty early on. I was telling everybody that the Nuggets were clearly the best team going into the playoffs. And I don't watch a lot of basketball during the season. I just keep up with like how everybody's doing because I don't like to be jaded on my bets of sports cards going into playoffs. And I like to just look at it as it is, not, oh, well, earlier in the season, this happened. And in this game, this happened. I like to just view it as it is. So this is around the time, like mid-April, late May, where I start like actually watching the games. There's just too many for me to watch them. So... With that being said, that was the end of the first deal, and we're going to knock all this stuff off the table over there and pull in the next deal. All right, so starting with this deal, a lot of stuff, I got to keep all of this in order, so let's get to it. And when I say a lot of stuff in order, um, I had a very interesting conversation the other day with somebody because they were asking me, they're like, dude, do you spreadsheet literally every single card that you buy? And I was like, hell yeah, I do. And he was like, why? And I was like, well, the biggest reason for me is I like to know what I'm into every single card for but one of the best reasons is that it's almost like my own card ladder. At any point, if I like can't find a comp on something, but I'm like, you know what? I know that I bought X. I can very quickly in my spreadsheet search and see what I either bought something for or paid something for, which is super helpful. And will that comp that I have in my private sale list basically show up? later on down the line maybe but it's almost just like my own database of knowing what i can buy or sell stuff for so that is the biggest reason as to why if you're at a show you'll see me on my laptop if i'm at trade night you'll see me on my laptop like i'm making sure i keep everything logged i'm logged as i go one of my old bosses always told me like clean as you go and i like to work as i go and keep track of all my stuff uh, i'm trying to be faster buying at shows for anyone that sells to me and you're like, damn, I'm never gonna tell Jacob this, but he's slow as fuck at shows. I'm trying to be faster buying at shows and do the spreadsheet stuff on the back end. But with all that being said, if you stay organized, you'll do well. And if you have good systems in any business, you'll do well. Um, so yeah, that's one of the biggest things that I like to implement because you can't scale up in this space without managing the business side of it a little bit better than most like it blows my mind blows my mind when i will talk to these guys and i'm like so how was your show and they're like oh i did like a hundred grand I'm like a hundred grand in what oh i, I made a hundred grand did you sell a hundred grand or did you profit a hundred grand like bro you don't even know you just know money came out and money went and money came and money went like that's not making money to me that's just literally spinning the wheels like you don't even know how much you're making bro so just something why did I buy this card? Why did I buy this? <laughs> Kenny Pickett is a bust. But with that being said, a lot of y'all have asked me if I can make like a spreadsheet video and I've considered it, but it just becomes this whole minutia of trying to understand it. Guys, just go look up a standard profit and loss sheet of keeping track of anything and it will get you started. I will work with me and my team on figuring out how we can do a spreadsheet video that's just like very basic because I just don't want to open up this massive can of worms of teaching people how to run a spreadsheet because that's just a basic note taking formula. It doesn't even need to be a spreadsheet. You just need to be able to keep track. So, all right. We're looking pretty good on some of these cards right now. I'm like flying over like five, six hundred dollar cards. That was a black box 101, by the way, and a honors 101, by the way. 
that card's nasty. But trying to make it a little bit more conversational because I can see the watch time on these videos and the average person is watching for like nine minutes. And it's like, how do I increase that? I should talk more and give more valuable advice and just riff and as they say back in the day, freestyle. This card's nasty. This card is so nasty. Because when I watch other people's pickup videos, no disrespect to literally anybody, I can only watch the cards for so long. Um, it just gets boring because I stare at pictures of men on cardboard all day. But uh, if you guys like this more casual conversation style, let me know. If you're like, no, switch it up, start talking about the cards more. I think what's important is that I will talk about the cards that are worth talking about. Some of them are just pretty obvious as to why you should buy them. Um, but yeah, one thing I did want to elaborate on, I think I said this in the last video, is because uh, I got some messages about it, is I was talking about um, downtowns and kabooms because if you haven't been to a show recently, if you walk up to a table, Brother, you ain't buying a downtown or a kaboom without somebody asking an absorbently, absorbent, the, a very high percentage on that, even if they don't deserve that percent. Like, to me, this is just my opinion, and I'm not, to a lot of people, I'm not anybody in this space, but for me, in my opinion, I think that nowadays, with the quantity of bad cards, and the quantity of good cards and you can define that amount however much you want it's more valuable to have a lot of good cards not just one or two or three good cards because the demand for good cards is so high but i'm not going to go up to a table and pay super strong on one good card unless it's like a monster or something like really really good that they're undervaluing or i see a lot of opportunity in but like this card for example if I walk up to your table and you want like 90 or 95% on a Sean O'Malley, like how the hell does that make any sense? This card, I think is like a hundred bucks. I don't even remember. But the point is, if you have like 50 of these, very different situation. And we can talk about giving you a higher percent if you're trying to sell to me. But these guys think that just because they have one downtown, they deserve this super all out super high percent it's just like that makes no sense that requires no work i can go buy that same card on ebay for probably less than what you have it for and the reason i bring all that up and downtown kabooms etc is because that's literally what so many people just focus on that's all they focus on but i don't think they even realize why they're focusing on it this card is insane this is insane by the way look this up right now and i'm gonna have dustin i'm gonna put the card down have dustin put the data up i'll send it to him this card is $162 as a PSA 9. And then it last sold for like 900, I think, or something like that as a 10. Like, bruh, you wanna talk about money glitches? Great. Grading is money glitches. Literally free money sometimes. But back to what I was saying. What I'm trying to get at is that you gotta put in some work. It doesn't take a lot to literally buy some downtowns. I was at this show in Alabama and I went up to this guy's table and he had like 40 something downtowns. And I was like, oh, cool. This is going to be difficult. Like I already knew it was going to be difficult. Just the way he was starting the entire conversation out was like, oh, I'm not here to sell them. I, I just, I know I can get 120%. And, da, 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 da. and then in my head, I'm just like, bro, do your cards. You can do what you want. But like, if you're at a card show and you're paying to set up, and you just want to play show and tell, like that makes absolutely no sense to me. Like, show and tell is for children. <laughs> like, if you just want to show me and tell me about your card, like, that's such a waste of time. Like, you're wasting your own time. And that's where, like, again, the whole point of this video right now is to rant and show y'all everything I'm buying and riff. I just don't get people that set up and literally don't want to sell their stuff. Like if you're set up and not trying to sell your stuff and just show it off, that's fine. But like go show it off on your Instagram or something because then I can choose if I want to look at it. But when you want to sit there and just say, nope, they're not available, then don't even put them out. 
Like, what if I offered you 200%? You're going to say no? Like, bro. Nice guy, though. We ended up doing the deal on another card. <laughs> it was just... Bro, people think they own a card and they're entitled. It makes no sense. Sorry. There is a lot of people in this space with a lot of cards. Like, brother, me and my boy Iman, shout out Cardmon, Card Main, Memphis Main. He's got a lot of nicknames with me. We always say, whenever we're getting annoyed with somebody, we always say, a lot of cards, a lot of cards, a lot of cards. Because, like, bro, the amount of times I've been in a deal and I'm, like, stressing. I'm making a video about this. It's already, like, on my to-do list. Stressing. I'm like, oh, my God, I have to buy this card. 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 I'll never see this card again. And then, literally, it comes up again at an easier deal or better percent or better data a few weeks later. It's, like, it's mind-blowing. Or, like, I'll be in a deal. Like, let's say someone walks up to me with a deal, like, this big. And they'll show me... Um, a card in there and like I want it so bad because I'm like F I need this card and it just doesn't end up working out like I swear for like the next five to ten minutes I'm like screaming on the inside but what I'm doing and what I used to do was I would force that card to work for me instead of it working for me just naturally and then those are the cards that I would get stuck with those are the cards that every time I would open up my case and start logging in my inventory or getting prepped for a show that I would look at and be like, bro, I wish you just didn't buy this. So something to keep in mind, like don't force it. There's so many cards, man. There's so many cards. I swear every week I get more cards and I'm like, I'm, I've never owned this card. I've never owned this card. I've never owned this card. I have owned this card, but this is a one-on-one. I've never owned this card. I have owned this card before, but not in a 9.5. Just casually showing a $4,000 card. But like the amount of like chromes I've owned in a PSA 10, like I can't even keep count anymore. And I say that in the sense of truly just being like, if it doesn't work, there's gonna be another opportunity, unless it's a one-on-one. And even then it may end up moving to someone else and then you'll have another opportunity at it. Like just don't force cards, people. Let me back up a little bit because I think I showed like bangers and didn't actually like go into it. Uh, Mahomes National Auto 25. Yeah. This shack was a nebula in the zone. <laughs> I actually enjoy this format more because let me tell you, brother. Brother, I get very tired when I'm doing these because I'm just like so tired of reading these cards out. Zion 101 auto rookie that guy is so cheap and a lot of people were holding the bag on him and i swear to god a lot of people were like i don't know if there's a market term for this but in like the stock market when like something recovers everybody sells really fast like a lot of zion got freed up and so a lot of zion that wasn't available for a very long time became available for the first time in a long time and so like this card it's like around two grand ish a 101 zion bruh Go look at some old Zion prices if you really want to feel bad for somebody. Like, Jesus. Jordan Jambalaya, PSA 10. Nasty, nasty, nasty card. Chet Optic Hollow, auto PSA 10. Lil Tatum, auto action. Uh, Kaminga, authentic gold. This car is nasty. Ray Allen, exquisite to 34. This card is so sick. Man, I hope they bring exquisite back and make it look like that. Like the designs on that stuff. Yes, it obviously has a little bit of vintage to it, but I hope they keep it like, it's almost like classy in a way. It's just got this like high level. Like when you look at flawless to me, it's like you can tell like they just put a lot of, I think minimalism in cards sometimes goes a really long way. Especially when like there's all this super flashy stuff. Like, look at this. That's not minimal at all. I'm like, bro, it's a baseball card with pink on it. All right. I think that's it for the second box. All right. I'm going to go grab the next two. I wish, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I would like you all to leave comments down below. I know my channel is not very big, so I'm not going to get a ton of comments. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. I hate doing that stuff, but a lot of people watch and don't subscribe. 
leave comments down below please on what you guys would like me to talk about in these because i will make a little list and put it on my teleprompter right here so i have like little notes to go off of and things to talk about because i'm assuming and hoping that the watch time goes up with this new format of how i'm doing these pickup videos because i'm gonna always adapt to whatever people need me to do because if not and no one's watching this stuff i'll still make it but like it's not my priority but if people are actually watching and engaging with it obviously it's gonna motivate me more to do it this is a nasty card. Jordan Love. Contenders clear ticket to 10 BGS9. Nasty. Durant, 9-5 auto. I swear to God, Jaron Jackson and Trey Young cards may be the most difficult cards in the world to buy because they're so shilled. But a Luka, Duel, Jaron Jackson to 49. Whew. Look at that little shine going on right there. It's nasty. This card bangs. So pretty. Frank Thomas Gold, BGS95, Patch Auto. Uh, Akuna. 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 I hear some of people saying so many different ways. Is it Acuna, Akuna, or Akuna? I swear to God, I've heard every single version. I probably should just go watch like an interview with them and see how many people will say it the right way. Halliburton, 299. Trey Young, Silver. PSA 9, Kevin Durant, PSA 9. We got a lot of cards showing here. Remember, if you're not, and you're halfway through this video and you like skip to the middle, first person to in these videos say how many cards I showed gets 20 bucks. And what's funny is I may play, start playing games with that and like do some magic trick or something i don't know i'm just talking now i'm just trying to fill in time let's start naming some of these cards and then i'll think of something else that's valuable to talk about so we can all just keep hanging out together we're kind of in a dead oh there we go we're kind of in a dead period of shows right now it's april 4th and there's a lot of shows that this card's nasty i love a card like this if you look this card up right now Joey Votto, I'm sorry, not Joey Votto. Juan Soto to five, Tops Dynasty. There's a sell of this exact card. That is my dream, because you know what it's worth. Especially when it's at auction, especially when the bids are above like 200 on the last bidder. Like, that's my dream. Um, but, oh, I don't know how that got in there. Actually, I do, because that's something for an organizational thing for me. This is sick, by the way. I don't know if y'all... If you don't have these, these are sick. They're like card dividers with teams on them. They're sick. I just found it and used it as a divider for something that I needed. But uh, there's not a lot of shows going on right now. And we're kind of in a show lull, which I think is a good thing. Because a lot of times when these shows get back to back to back to back to back, it can be a little bit hectic. Especially for people that have families. Shout out all my parents that are in the card business shout out all the people that are single in the card business but mostly shout out the parents in the card business but what i'm trying to say is that there's a little bit of a lull in shows now and for me that's amazing because basically i made the money during that time and so it allows me to clear out like i'd like to li uh liquidate during like slow times liquidate like stale inventory something that doesn't really move fast for me or take care of a lot of like accounting or back-end stuff um, recently, for example, no one asked, but I'll tell them, I hired my brother to start helping me on stuff, which has been super helpful because that's the one thing about being self-employed or running your own business. Cause if you're in sports cards and you have five cards, 10 cards, 20 cards, like you're running your own business. If you don't want to look at it like that, that's fine. If you want to treat it like a hobby, that's fine. But I know guys that say it's a hobby and they still try to sell me cards. So is it a hobby? I don't know. All I can say is in my other business, which is video production, if you call it a hobby, it means you suck. Am I saying that's the case in this case? No, but the point I'm trying to make is that if you exchange money in this space at some level, you're going to have to spend the money, sell it or get acquire something new. So it is some level of a business. But what I'm trying to get at most of all is that I just lost my train of thought. Wow. I don't even know how to recover from that. I'm just gonna let that run. 
don't even know how to recover from that. I literally lost where I was going with that because I already know that someone's going to be like, bro, you're you're doing all this and you know, you're not you're not helping the collectors. And oh, this fell. This is a cool one that fell just a Jimmy Butler to five that got unorganized, which is going to be a nightmare for me. But guys, listen, in anything where money's exchanged, there's going to be people that come in like me and there's people that are way bigger than me that spend way more money than me. And it's just the name of the game. Like when any money is exchanged in anything, you're inevitably going to have people that aren't doing it for fun. Is there times where I will admit that this is no longer fun? Yeah, like bro. But then there's times where like right now where like I'm like itching, itching to go to a show because I haven't been to a show in two weeks. And so the fun happens when I get the pre-show jitters again, like the pre-game jitters. But it's great because it's, I kind of remember now what I was talking about earlier. Dead times are a good time to like take care of this card's nasty. 101 Kareem. It basically is just a good time for you to like reset and start prepping for your next wave or your next quarter of shows or cards, liquidate, reset. Because that's the one thing, man. If you sit there and hold stuff, like I think a lot of guys learn this the wrong way. They get really emotional about their cards. If you sit there and hold stuff, you're allowing any sort of volatility. That's in anything. And I swear to God, people think cards are the only thing sometimes that go down. Like, let's look at, let's just pause for a quick second and look at an alternative asset in the middle of this. Today is Mar, uh, I keep trying to say the date because sometimes people obviously watch these later. I was talking with a buddy of mine who is trying to get up to like five Bitcoin and we were on a job together this week and I can't remember where he told me he bought in. He bought it in like 25, 20 range or something like that. But we were together at the beginning of the week and like he hadn't checked his Bitcoin in a minute and Bitcoin that day was like, focus up phone, was like 70 grand or something like that. Yeah. And then it dipped like right down here. And then he bought back in, in this period. And now look, like, bro, markets go up and down in anything. Bitcoin is another alternative asset, obviously a very popular asset. But let me tell you something, brother. When Bitcoin, which is one of the bigger alternative assets, I'm not some major investor, please don't ever think that's the case. But when Bitcoin goes up, inevitably sports cards are gonna do well. When the stock market crashes, everything starts to crash. Like that's just the name of the game. That's money moving right there. But like when I see Bitcoin going up, I'm like, bro, I'm throwing as much money in the sport cards as I can even more because it's just assets in a way. But like guys get stuck holding the bag on these cards. Like I'm holding two cards right now. And as soon as I can get done with my accounting for this year and everything I need to do, because I'm doing a lot of new stuff with my accountant, we gonna find a way to get rid of some of these bricks I'm sitting on and take these losses like that's a business i swear people are like oh my god it's december and these cards are going for so low it's because people that actually treat this like a business they're taking the loss to get it on their books like that's just any market and i swear people don't put two and two together on that and they start freaking out they just think the market's going down they don't think that like people are actually doing things business wise to help themselves so I feel bad for people sometimes that are doing this for a hobby that are watching their prices go up and down. But if you're doing it for a hobby and you're watching your prices, is it a hobby? Nasty card here. Kevin Garnett, Opulence. Fun times. One of my buddies always says for the hobby, if he's watching, he knows who it is. Oh, but to follow that up, because I plan on making a PC video soon i do do this as a hobby there are times where i'm in the middle of a deal and i'm just like you know what this is so much fun that i literally get to sit here and buy and sell can we pause for a second what's the pop count of victor gonna be like i'll throw up what it is today i'll send dustin a picture to put it up here but the pop count on victor is probably going to be nuts like easily his prison base will be top 10 like no question um but yeah, I do like any rare, super cool looking Titans card, like something that I've never seen before, I'm usually gonna buy. Um, that can be hit or miss on the player. Like it's really just kind of like talk to me. 
Like, I'm not trying to get cooked on the Titans card, bro. Like, there's no market for Titans. Like, I don't care what you want to say. There's no market for Titans. Like, people are trying to make Will Levis a thing right now. That's because he's honestly cheap. But, like, bro, people don't care about this. So, obviously the saying of collect what you like. If you do, do it. But, like, the thing for me is, like, I buy what I like. I buy what I know. I don't like buying baseball sometimes because, like, it's pure. I will admit it is purely a money thing. Like, I literally don't watch baseball. World Series, I don't watch it. I just don't watch it. I just have never been interested in baseball. But, like, football, brother, you bet I'm watching it. And that's also, quick side note, how I made my the most amount of money in my starting capital on this was I was super, super heavy into fantasy sports before coming into this. And I was sitting there watching how much money and how all of my friends and colleagues talked about um, fantasy football. And I was like, bro, all these people are going to come into the sports card market and look, not even just before the boom, it was the basketball market because that's where so much prospecting was. But now it's football because it's a massive market of people that came in that all they do is watch football. That's why football never dies. I think I said this in the last video, I don't remember. But what used to happen from A, what I saw, and B, what I've been told, is that post, like, just during the playoffs, the football market would start to, like, really soften up. And then there would be this really big lull right before the draft, and then it would spike, and then come back. But now, like, it never stops. There's a lot of reasons why for that, social media and everything, and you get to find out about everything that's going on in the NFL way faster. But it's also more of, you know, there's more people that are into football and they talk about football all year round. So a new people entered the space and that's what happened. All righty, my friends, we are on to the last box. If you've been hanging all the way through, I appreciate you. If you counted all the cards, I appreciate you. But more than anything, it's funny to me, like, who put this in a leaf sticker? Like, bruh. <laughs> so funny. You want to talk about, like, being your own business? Like, bro, if I walked up to your table and everything was in a leaf sticker, like, I don't care what the card is, like, you'd get mad respect for me. Like, if you put a card like this in a leaf sticker, I would be cracking up. Cracking up. Oh, boy. We're going to keep this yawn in here. I'm not even going to tell Dustin to cut it out. Uh, to a field pass. You want to talk about somebody? Look, I'm going to tell you right now how to make some money. Like right now. Buy Tua. Sell them before week seven. And you're welcome. That's how you make money. Tua and the Dolphins do the same thing every year. They're like, they may be one of the most predictable teams. Period start out super hot one of the best teams and then flame out like super flame out oh boy nasty card Dak Prescott camo PSA 9 this card bangs Aaron Rodgers to two select patch auto uh, Trey Murphy Keontae George Sangoon Kevin Durant Jonathan Kaminga sneaky guy going into the playoffs we are on our last stack my friends please 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 if you stayed all the way through and you're hearing me talking right now please leave a comment down below if you prefer this format of me just like casually talking about the market riffing on random things ranting on random things if you don't want to hear me talk then why are you watching my video in the first place but if you like this format over me just naming every single card, please let me know because I'm trying to engage with you all a little bit more. You're more than welcome to message me at any time. Time permitting, I would message you. If it's post 5 o'clock central, I'm not responding. And I don't know how people have not picked up on that. If it's post 5 o'clock central and I've never spoken to you, I'm definitely not responding. Because that's the one crazy thing that, again, going back to the business in this space, a lot of people don't realize that, man, I could work on sports cards every second of every day of my life. Which ties back into my earlier point of how many freaking cards there are. Like, 
you can literally make this a full-time job. All you got to do is educate yourself, educate yourself, and educate yourself. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment down below if you watched all the way through and you guessed how many cards were right. At some point, I'll send you 20 bucks. We're going to figure out a system for this because I want people to be engaged in these pickup videos. I enjoy doing them. It's not to show off. It's just to show you guys everything I'm picking up because if I'm buying it, it's more than likely a liquid card because I buy a lot of cards and I'm not trying to buy bricks. So if you see me buy something and you go out and you see that card, you can always sell it to me. I'm on Instagram at Contrast Cards. Please message me if you're selling. I say this every single time and I'm going to say this every single time. If you message me and you say, hey, bro, are you buying? Like, you just watch this video and you ask me if I'm buying. Of course I'm buying. But if you want success, just like anything in life, be prepared. Like your cover letter should read, hey, Jacob, hey, Contrast Cards, I have this for sale. It's valued at this. I'm looking to get this. If you say that, you're saving me like 10 minutes of time of sitting there and go back and forth with you just to get to the point where you could walk in and tell me everything I need to know. This is a rule I apply to myself in this space. And if you start applying this to yourself, I promise you, my friend, you will go a long way. Do not be the buyer and the seller. Like I'm the buyer. If you're coming to me to sell, don't make me sell the card to myself. Like what are we doing? So approach it as the seller to me, if you got stuff to sell and we'll knock a deal out. Cause I'm setting some things up to allow me to be able to buy online more. It's been a little hard if you've messaged me to sell before and I don't get back to you. I apologize, but with all that being said, thank you all for watching and we'll talk soon.